Good morning. Or whatever it is, wherever you are. <clears throat> oh, where the heck were we? <clears throat> Yeah, web seed scanning. So we've done two different versions of this because we need it for different purposes. Uh, we had an entirely different pass here, so that might end up being. Well, I guess if I was updating maps, I would need still need to do both. So we're working, well, there's the arc breaks that are ha happening in, in the middle of files. I am starting to wonder if I should have like a log and an arc log. But most of the time the spans are going to line up and then arcs are going to have seeds. Right, we need to preserve values because all of my updates of arcs right now have been able to function as full over. Because <clears throat> they were only coming from one place. One of the problems we have now Uh, is that if I try to do any kind of manually maintained information, <clears throat> or even information from multiple sources, it can get overwritten by the other process. So maybe what I really need to do for safety purposes is we have like a seed change file that gets done by scanning the files and only change between files. Well, or when it... And then we a arcs file that happens as part of scanning the individual map log where we can detect well The breaks in the log processing are going to occur breaks in log processing can be triggered by seed files are Strictly from a different source of information. <clears throat> I've been kind of wondering if I shouldn't like treat each 
file chunk as a separate thing. Uh, I would have to go through and do a like recomposting step, which based on seed changes. <clears throat> Which, for just the static images, I mean, it would be a, a lot less data rows. The problem is that when we're operating on S3, you would have to download every single chunk and post it. Uh, I could maybe use that as a, a fix-up process. Like you produce just the image of final placements for this, this, for this span. And then for actual display, you have a composting pass. So it start out as base zero span. Well, it would be a, a separate. The composted span would start at base zero. You'd have a composting pass, and then when you went to update them, well, you can't just use base. Base change. Essentially, each span would have to have a pre. Then you can check at the precursor list. I guess you could record the, the root timestamp. Root in the base. And if either of those change, then it needs to be over. Whenever you built a new one, its base would be the same as it, its root would be the same as the root of its base. I mean, either that or we do some sort of like file hash bit style. Uh, if we do it as separate passes, so we have the map digestion phase. Mostly produce span. Spans of uncomposted tiles. And then under normal daily update circumstances, we wouldn't need to recompost anything else. Uh, we would have to write out the recomposted step which is a bunch of extra, which is the normal daily processing is twice as many writes to S3. The advantage being that when we need to reprocess something, we don't have to read the entire log. Well, it's just final image. Then I w could set up to do a separate step uh, from the map log generation. So that's actually often one of the, one of the larger chunks of the processing and uploading. A reprocessing just final image from scratch what might not be too
So for at least for development, the the composting step is tempting just because I could do all of the really long pre-processing and then recomposting and probably be pretty fast. I guess you'd still well, you'd have the uploading and downloading with an S3 file operations. Could we turn this into this pre-scan into a seed log? Uh, we'd have to do some fuzzy matching with the actual arc processing. We seed ranges. Well, seed ranges kind of are arcs. Well, arcs can arcs can be map wipes that don't involve a seed change, but a seed change almost always involves a map wipe. And we just we have two different sources of that information. We have the in, inner interfile. Certain places where interfile arcs imply a map wipe. And mostly it's just seed changes. But yeah, so arcs 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 imply map wipes generally. And one of the things I was thinking is that either arc log needs to be updated in place. It means I kind of need to tiptoe around anything that's information destructive. Or I need to have like two, two versions that can be authoritatively produced from their sources and then try to merge them somehow. Which, given that the bus of producing file scan arcs would be kind of nice. Now, if I don't have to write out the files, it's not as bad, but some of them are pretty big. Now, file scan arcs might only really be an issue for the historical ones. Because that's pretty much um, implied by seed changes and interfile arcs, which I could almost have a manually maintained list of where those arcs were. What I don't have is any clear way to associate source log files with arcs right now. I mean, maybe the processed file could be sort of used for that. So 
Yeah, so this tells me how many paths we produce. There's going to be very few of these that actually produced maybe only one. Or a single file produced multiple arcs. Hmm. That only gives you path output. I would have to have that do... That process would need to produce its little... Yeah, so I could have a, a file that's essentially processed, which outputs more information. Because, okay, we processed this, this, we processed this file, we think it has this many arcs in it. Then got the CD scan process, which all amps should be pretty close, but no. For an idle server, the first placement different for the file timestamp. Never got turned on. Well, if it's just a C log and it's just just time ranges, and we could maybe narrow that down. Uh, so, the, yeah, so this is indexed by file, but generally speaking, yeah, so that will maintain that as kind of an invariant key. Uh, oh, this, do, this doesn't match up with args because we might have been... Oh, and, and oh, I used to be doing the file merging. We're going to be doing that by, by base extension. Oh, so that's actually a little bit of a problem. If each file produces a list of arcs and we want to consider that, you know, authoritative, so to speak, of arc splits, But we were handling that kind of internally to the map process. So I might, well, I mean, I've got code to do that. I've got merges with at the file level. which actually kind of takes care of the file-to-file -file version. Uh, 
because that's all that's largely determined that's pretty much determined from the file name so I could always like recreate the file off of this to ask those questions that's file to file file does have multiple arcs it has to be considered a map white point File ends up with multiple arcs, then that is also a map white point. Then it's speed change. All right, so we take this process, we produce a like seed log. We expand file processing. So that we do the processing and we capture all of the information we need from that process. And then we post process that information to get Spans or arcs? Uh, let, um, hmm. Maybe you can just produce spans from that. Now I've been incrementally producing spans in the map processing so far. Hmm. So do I have each file's spans and arcs produced? I don't know if you ever really uh, resume anywhere. We got floor movement size, object size is breakpoints. Oh, breakpoints are pretty. Those start out new. If we have a base arc, we have a base time. That's just the base. If it's a base arc. Then we are resuming it. The main purpose of this is to find arcs. So actually, if we reduce this to spans, well, there's that one case, which maybe we can, maybe we just special case that one case. where it's an actual map reset at this time. Uh, so let's start trying to do this. Uh, so this process may need to get extracted at some point. <clears throat> this is only looking at like file name level. Okay, this was writing out the arc file. Uh, which... Hmm... So I might even be able to sort of use that same arc list. We're going to have a start, we're going to have an end, we're going to have a seed. This, these are all seed spans, so they're never, they're not, they're themselves are not going to have any bases.
And it's just that one case that may end up being a little bit different. But right now we're treating this as sort of an authoritative overwrite of that information. Oh, right, because I think it was my thinking my timestamps end up being a little bit different uh, coming out of the actual map log processing. Is that going to be called ARC still? No, ARCs wouldn't have bases. It's really spans that have bases. And it's just that one little weird bit of weirdness that we have. <clears throat> Split that's not determined by this. And I kind of want... This thing to be a thing in and of itself, I guess. How fast is it to rebuild this? Well, for the local files, and actually it's just out of index information for the remote file. So that's only one fetch. So I might actually be able to determine this at runtime and not write it back out. Well, it might be convenient to write it out for recording purposes, but I don't necessarily need to read it back in. So we could extract this as like seed log or something. And a seed log This is multiple passes, so right now that's multiple fetches, which notes. Uh, no, no, cache. Um, So to make it completely independent, it would be a separate iteration. Uh, this is, yes, yeah, so I think logs.each is fetching that. Uh, we could abstract over this by just giving it the individual log. Oh, you know, I've, I've been doing no server here. Well, it's the server name, not a server number. Use the translation there. So if we give it a collection, and if we just, as long as it's just an eachable thing, an interval, could got that anyway. Now this was set up to Load an arc list file system, which would load the previous arc list, but this seems to be something we can reproduce from scratch. I was looking at this, this is the thing that we would 
um, be merging with other information. But if we don't want to deal with possible information destruction there, This is mostly doing Yeah, it's doing like all the encoding and decoding. Well, and the base and R chat, which is gonna have to possibly get revised. But for a single pass. This is really just an array. Depend, depend, checkpoint, yeah. This is just an array of arcs, and if I want to put it into that thing later, I can. <clears throat> oh, I do need uh, something like that to serialize. Log. And this is not... Well, if I add a provision for a file name... Uh, you could just go through and 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 right. Uh, so right now this implicitly loads. I guess if I do like load and save at such and such, uh, at which point, and it might I might end up doing spurious loads. But really, load and only load and save would need all the file system placement path information and final path. And really, we, we could determine the whole full file name at that point. Uh, but you have the serialization method. Yeah, so it would really just be file system path then. And that would be at, you know, we'd have to have an explicit load, other than the, the lazy load. Less of a drop into the old one, but. Uh, in which case, arcs becomes, well, we don't even have arc path here. You become standard. All of this drops out. Uh, you drop out. So this becomes our... I almost wonder if these shouldn't take the file handle. Let's file system read. Arc load. Well, you wouldn't return the value in that case. File system write do. Workload F. Probably fine. Um, I don't know if you have an... Well, you have... You have this.
All right, to retrofit existing code, we have tiled. We're not even running right now. Uh, no, this is final. Uh, in which case, yeah, okay, there's arc path. Arc list, you are just an arc list dot new. And we'll just assume we open that. I should probably at least defer this to process. <clears throat> now, I guess that means I could possibly be loading this multiple times. Well, then we go back to lazy loading. The processed. Uh, there's spans. Oh, uh, that would imply this was actually nothing. All right, so you still got lazy loading. Uh, map process just needs an arc list right now. And then maybe we want to do, I don't think it needs to be, um, whether, it's, whether it's one for this is probably to be determined. Arcs, 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 arcs. I have to turn this before. Output path. This is just going to be seeds, I think. Not finish, finish up the constructor. Nope, I did not. Got put path. Oh, it wasn't output path, it was placement path. All right, so now we've got, which is going to be exactly the same as that. Yeah, so that is the stuff we can determine directly from the file path. That is relatively cheap to produce. I guess, I, having recorded it, I could also load it just as easy as producing it. Uh, I'm probably going to have to abstract this process. Similar to how we'd abstracted all the map log, all the final placement and map log production, we want I guess creating the arc list and then this thing will decide 
I mean, even though process normally writes it out, we really just need a way to de determine this is. So what I kind of like ArcList as being kind of a serialization thing. Arguably, some of the semantics of this don't make sense for this model. I really just need the serialization. So given a list of log files, I'm going to do all that stuff. What do we call that? Is that arc list process? It's more like a C. That's map wipes. Breaks. Uh. Speed break. Um, I don't know what your new is going to look like. Uh, you're really going to be a self, aren't you? You're actually producing an object in this. <clears throat> You're actually just a module right now. And then at the end of the method, that's the loop. So you could even return just a straight up array, although I would have to then like turn it into the serialization format of ArcList. Hmm. All right, it's extra work, but it's fine. So that takes care of all of this stuff. I guess we call it output seed log. It doesn't, it doesn't actually output it. I guess I, I see the output if it's run. Uh, and there we go. Seed breaks. Seed break. 
speed break. Okay, fine. One of those naming is hard things. Yep, and, and there too. Uh, what the heck did I put it as? Oh no, I used I used complete from this path, which uh, is not where the libraries are. I uh, probably should have kept what folder. Okay. Uh, is this effect, um, some of the arc breaks, uh, sort of this, there's still the problem of tagging manual things, but I might just have to put in like a, a manual file and this whole, I, we keep separate information and merge it idea. Uh, this might kind of take up the fix up. Uh, so the other thing will produce, not produce any. You still have, yeah, you have to deal with. There's a special case of two arcs, one. <clears throat> Then, when we process map logs, our primary output is going to be span. Then maybe I have to handle that one special case somewhere else. It's a new arc. There's the whole base arc. That's for extending the range. There are the cases of multi-file arcs, but that's just the same thing as our continuous process. It's all the same seed. Uh, that kind of follows well, the merges with is going to need some updates. Uh, that's not something that easily happens within a file anymore. Uh, okay, start, start, start. Okay, so that's the same time as a span. Boom. That's the same time as a span. It might be extended if we can identify a base arc. But base arc, I think, largely follows the merges process. Okay, so same set, same set. Uh, now, because the question is, okay, so span equals Spans are reset at times that arcs are not. But if we have a span log and our list of seed changes, oh.
I could do a different span when we get those interfile breaks. It just wouldn't be a new arc. Okay. Hmm. And if we weren't caring about arc management at all here... All right, uh, so that's you. Uh, what about output map logs? I don't even think you use the arc yet. You use the span, you use the tile set. Final placements is currently managing arcs. But it's just recording them to the list. Oh, pff. this needs to change. So if we just had you output spans, then either this or another post-processing step could mash that up. Uh, but most might just have to have like a little break log or a bit of code that one case, and then I'll need some way to... poke temporary um, changes. Uh, which maybe that's like a manual file that... Now it, if I can tag the manual file with the exact seed that eventually shows up as a map log or a map seed, it can kind of take care of itself. So I think child stops doing arcs. Now, I could just ignore the arcs it produces. Well, I've got source control if I need that. So that means we, if we get a if we get one of these, we actually would want to split. Now that might end up not aligning well with our breakpoints, which were determined externally. But uh, oh, I guess there is still the if start here. If it's not the first one, well, I guess we remove arcs first. Well, okay, so can't quite remove that arc. If we're going to keep that condition. Or we, we stop providing them. Uh, that changes our interface. We don't have to maintain... Uh, spans are going to record that information. Okay, so I mean that is is reasonably clear. 
get a start line, we can go ahead and break break this break the span. All right, now map log, uh, no output map log. Wasn't using it. Final placements. Uh, now we actually. Uh, do you go and like manage arcs at some point? Hmm. Oops. Uh. What's we get for not running code? Uh, no, not tiled. Okay. Uh, that will be saving empty arcs right now. Uh, so we don't need, I don't think it's going to be a prior process necessarily. Wait, did I, I, okay, no, I didn't remove that yet. All right, well, that's just not there. How much is left? Once again, it's in source control. I mean, it's a little bit of a pain to put stuff back. But I suspect it's gonna be kind of an, a we might want it in an external process. All right, uh, so what was I doing to disable this? Ah, we were taking out all this stuff. Oh, and I don't remember what my what my check was. Um, yeah, so I think that this was the. Now this is a greater than. That's going to be a bunch of files. Relatively small. Seed break arc list. Right, you moved. Get rid of that buffer. Oh, yep. Breakpoints. What? App log, a oh, block. That process. Nope. Oh, right, because it was complaining about an unused variable there too.
And I had output of details disabled or disabled. We just produce a brand new file. Forty two eighty nine. You resumed properly from the looks of things. All right, so you only produce spans. Separate process, but it's not merged. Uh, it's just like be a final base arc. I mean, there's going to be some merge issues. Uh, and then we have to. Combine seed spans. Uh, now, spans have had seeds in them. I wonder if I need to have, like, the direct. This all comes back to the whole modifying issue. The direct output of the processing step. It probably be what it is. If you process the file, we have data and that is. Then maybe I produce a different file that has the. Now, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is ex redoing processed. <clears throat> but that could have all of the, the direct file products, so to speak. Which is gonna be spans. Spans are always within a file. <clears throat> Uh, right, I've just been putting paths right now because it was like redundant information, but if we're doing kind of doing direct process, what does that look like? Um, we are doing processed and span, so that sort of makes sense that that reduces that to a single output file. Kind of crept up into three. Mm, that tiled. <clears throat> the processed. Which we weren't really using the previously processed information because uh, we need to be testing that code a lot right now. <clears throat> yeah, so you get paths. Uh, that could be spans, and your spans uh, 
We can get seeds from some of the older ones, not from some of the newer ones. Although I guess I could arrange to pass the seed down to here. We've got an option here. If we've already scanned and determined seed information. No, because the seeds are going to change. After the fact, but. Maybe I could use that to determine what it means to be processed. A new seed gets published. Oh, also means that there was a map wipe. Having a that period should have had a we eventually have a map wipe there. So that's not new. In for those files is new. In all that stuff and then possibly later I come in and man map wipe one that might also change or require reprocess so yeah that needs The, the process actually needs to record the process and eventually I need more water. So like all of the information, all of the context information that was used to process it. So when the context changes, uh, that becomes invalid. Anyway. I'll be back in a few minutes. I guess we should just go ahead and push that, shouldn't we? It doesn't work while you're carrying it. But it totally works every time you drop it. Dude, if you do a finisher while you're on the ship, you automatically fall. 14 strength. That's pretty sweet. But is that what they started with? Because that doesn't get boosted up, right? As far as I know. Okay. So we need to do some more debugging. So the issue is when it comes out here, it wants to go in either direction. So when it comes out, I think we need to make sure. But why would it ever try and go backwards? There's an exit over here. A lot, a lot of lagging, huh? I'm still lagging. I'm putting everything below. No, but it's because we need to. Uh, how much RAM do you have? Eight. Alright, just go. Just Alright, welcome back. Alright, so this needs. So right now, our options are base file. Which I think is an entire log file. Yes, so I guess we have to record report that as path. Uh, so base is important. Uh, eventually, root will be important, and seed will be important.
Uh, now this is sort of modifiable, but only on an entry by entry level. <clears throat> the time processed output paths are going to be kind of the same as output span. We're going to be recording full information. And since he's going to rewrite this every time we record the file, an array is fine. Uh, we're going to need spans. We need time. We need base path. Hmm, should that be nil or not present? Uh, yeah, logfile.path is what we're recording. <clears throat> We're just going to want root path. We eventually want to have seed. But this is starting to change our form. Uh, processed is just a straight JSON read and probably a straight JSON write. You'd have a span structure, though. Oh. Well, spans aren't changing. This is all the context in Well, yeah, base path is the information this gets. So Oh, you know what? This doesn't change. So I guess, yeah, the resolved base time would be what we would actually end up resolving this on. Because that's what gets pasted, passed down and not the base file. That's in a loop. Base tile set. Okay, fine. And we don't yet have other options. So for now, uh, okay, so processed was only being written on successful right. Uh, I think this is going to completely obviate this version of spans. Uh, we want to get this built up first. Uh, 
and spans were a pure uh oh um right that was a list this was reconstructing a hash so it could update them if need I don't think I need to do that here because it's just going to be the spans produced from this file and it's going to be straight up overwrite. Okay, uh, I think I had, yeah, I probably want to reset this file for the viewing. And yeah, the, the print is not super helpful here. So you each got one span. I don't have any reason to doubt that will work. Right, because these are old, so they actually get seeds. I'm not sure. Uh, recording the base used at the time of processing is going to be important. Oh, I was recording base time zero, not null. Span purpose. So that's some of the context. So time processed. The base time is something a little bit different. The spans produced. Hmm. It's, there really shouldn't be a situation where a seed can change during a file. I don't think there's any, any place that happens. So if we can determine the effective seed, the effective arc for this log file, We can pass a seed option that goes all the way down, and then it'd probably have to go through here as well, because right now we're getting it from the file itself, where it's tempting to tag. If the information is not in the file, that's a little dodgy. Uh, we also eventually need to have a root time to handle. Manual reset. And this is going to change all of our process. All right, how much have we done? Uh, let's see, so for the map logs, we won't care about base time, we won't care about root time, we won't really care about C. I might need something in there for like, Object version, because maybe they could be reprocessed if that was wrong. Okay. Uh, 
I need you to have content. So now I need the process of as we go through the log files, we want to try and determine Well, do you need the effective seed? The seed changes that doesn't actually affect the file process. If we continue recording seeds in spans, it affects the span, it doesn't affect the files. What it checks the files is actually a root change. Oh, and that's a that's a, that's the same as a seed change. No, because the history is the same. Uh, when that seed gets published, it, we can we can draw the base map, but it doesn't change the file processing as long as the time's right. So I was using seed as a proxy for root time. But seed publishing doesn't change that. But right now I'm using this, which doesn't cover seed changes. Yeah, so this, this breakpoint stuff still needs work. Uh, 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 I'm going to have to process possibly multiple files to be really checking this, but there's base file. So if we determine the arc we think this is part of, That changes the root we use. So if it merges, we use that. Oh. Well, not the no root condition is no base. But every file along there needs to have Oh, so that's the it's kind of the same thing. Uh, if it merges with, we have a base file. Else, we have a root. Uh, Uh, a base file zero, but is a reset condition, and then if it doesn't merge, then the new file is the root of everything else. So this thing will be its own root, or the first one of its of the of the series will be its own root. And then we want to record base time, we want to record root time. Uh, that's getting a time stamp? Given us and the base file. Oh, that's looking at our span repository. Right, because I'm currently identifying spans by their end.
Do I need that for root? No, it is its own root. I guess the other thing that's important about root is that it can change. But this thing's span won't be identified yet. The only thing important about a root is that it changes. So actually the file timestamp will be sufficient here. Roof tile. I really don't need to do printing processed because it's just not readable. Root, root. That is actually going to be the start time. <laughs> so right now that's a merge, no merge. And arcs are being determined strictly based on file times. We still have to deal with the special case. Uh, spans don't necessarily need, uh, I guess the bases are relevant if you have multiple spans in a, in a chain. Seed was so we could do this, because I haven't written the stuff that uses the seed yet. So maybe spans isn't the right place for it. Well, yeah, C is going to affect natural object layers. Certainly the biome layers could be conserved changes that might want to run on its own schedule. I haven't dealt with that. Haven't dealt with that. Mm, haven't dealt with that. Haven't really dealt with that. That will eventually affect reprocessing. Probably, I'm doing all of my breaking entirely off of that right now. But if the files merge, maybe it's just a separate condition on that, on that check. Merges with prior. Uh, don't necessarily need a prior. 
do this check. Uh, so if our seed log is based entirely on file timestamps, now we had to offset it to make sure we didn't have over. We really only have start times to go. Hmm. So previously, I had excluded start time because I was using end times because that's part of an image. It's at that time. So for compatibility with that, I start time. Log by itself would naturally run start to end. Start minus. But actual placement. Uh, we should have. Okay, I didn't save it. C, 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 C. We need to be able to determine which one is effective here. Well, this is saying arc at. Now, this doesn't do any of the plus one stuff. You do the plus one stuff. Well, I guess I would just have to ask for arc at time percent. Which is why, why that is kind of funny that you determine it from the files and then have to do this little offset. Uh, I guess. Yeah, if you ask for arc at time, you could loosen the condition a little bit. Then, well, which is it? Uh, arc five seven three six five seven a start five six okay so that makes sense uh so I guess what we want to do uh you could be a null. Oh, and the point of doing that was to ask this for everybody. Oh, I don't have any reference to which file it was. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. But we do have long runs of multiple seeds. 
Uh, we don't have the manual break here at the end. We have the two missing bits. Uh... Okay, so the interesting points are going to be where you change. So we've got a up seed at 503. 503 resolves to a new seed. Got map change there. Uh, at 673, 673 resolves to the new seed. Uh, and these you can generally see following from there. We've got these weird doubles and things where it got messed up. So that all seems to be in order. And to the extent that we are recording seeds with things, we should probably be recording that seed. Uh, and I guess, actually, does, that's, where, that's the arc at. Uh, so the actual seed. I mean, it's kind of an arc. Ish. Seed equals arc and arc dot. Seed or empty array. Sure, our precedence is all good. And then you get that seed. All right, go ahead and process. Uh, I guess I am kind of curious about the, the double seed ones. In particular. Seed is the span seed. Um, But everything in here I'd say I could pass it all the way down or I just stop really processing. So that will allow me to get new seed information down to other files. Uh, I done something for you. No, seed null, seed null, seed null. Uh, I haven't even run this since I added seed, it looks like. All right, so for any one file, breakpoints. Oh, right, 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 right. Took you out because you weren't needed and it was complaining about unused variables.
Uh, okay, we got that open. All right, and that recorded a two-part seed. Does this affect notes? Uh, we're not using this for breaks right now. We're not actually creating a spans file yet. Gonna kind of take up fix out. All right. Uh, we're not yet using this information for breaks. Well, we're determining the root file. Yeah, but we're only using this information. So really, I'm calling that a C log, but uh, that might not act. So it's really, is it a different arc? Uh, okay, we missed one. Uh, so prior log file. So if it's that, then we have a base file. And it's a reset. Uh, we want So this is merges with. If it's the if we're in the same arc and it is there. We're not really recording reasons for this. Uh, and this is probably where we want to be doing this without actual processing. You know, I do this too often. Uh, so we can define these things. They will be referenced in the code. Uh, Breakpoints are only used by you if I mean you can be even 
even as simple as this. So we won't have unreferenced symbols, and we just won't do that. And maybe that would be useful as a config variable kind of thing. Oh, because this isn't, because it, yeah, and prior log file. I guess it's sufficient to note that one breaks. All right, so we've got a root at 73, we've got a root at 503, and we haven't done manual detection down here, but... Let's, um... Let's just remove this condition for... Yeah, okay, so that, that is doing, that is, that is being effective. And I could probably do like a timestamp or something to make this a little bit more compact. All right, so this adds the condition that the seed resets can cause a break. That's basically covering this. Kind of. We're leaving the printing in there, but we're going to need it right away. Uh, let's see. Seed files. All right. And well, we still got this nearly thing. Uh, manual tagging. So we're going to have to have some kind of like manual file, maybe make, make a thing to streamline adding it. Uh, but for processing, we just need to have a file. Uh, I was thinking of possibly editing uh, like arcs or something. Well, well, so really seed break will read that file. And then break those series and then everything else will use that. <clears throat> So really, I just need what is effectively the timestamp that will eventually be a map log seed. So I don't know if I actually recorded recorded this. Uh, what does it look like in the index? That looks terrible, first of all. So this file... Five oh three. Right, so this was updated through the 19th. Uh, this was created on the 18th. All right, so for right now, I think I'm using actual file system file stamps for my local version. I might want to have that do file 
timestamps. Well, I mean, I can look at this. Uh, no, we don't have we don't have a new file yet. <clears throat> Uh, this is where I need the time gaps, which I don't think I have that code anymore. Unless it's still part of that. Because I think I stopped recording the... Hmm. Oh, you you can kind of tell the the pacing changes. Um. Right? Did I lose track of it? Well, I know when most code updates. So I went and did a fetch and got a couple days of stuff. Uh, let's look at our gaps. Uh, okay, so we actually are printing this out. Well, no, we're printing the merge breakout. Oh, if prior and false, okay. Well, we're printing both, so it's kind of messy. So really, we only start caring about that down here. Hmm. That's enough to not be 24 hours? Then where is long file timestamp, approx log time gap? Twenty three. Shoot, did I lose track when that reset happened? There's probably Let's see, there were two updates recently. Uh Forums, news. Lead and follow was very, very late on the 13th. So, yeah, so that could have cut that file short. Not sure about that one. And there was an apocalypse with probably this one. Twelve ten. Got a group at twelve eleven. And that would have been overnight. When I when I heard about the apocalypse, uh, but I got multiple files there, and I think the causing map log wouldn't have been published yet. Uh, we know what the this law. Well, it's. Uh, 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 uh. 
the gap. Uh, and that is at log file dot timestamp. Actually, the next one would have been the first of the new age. Okay, so actually, there we can sort of determine this just by looking at the data. So. We look at you early on. We see a two nine two. So I don't think that could be a state of nature. Now, yes, people will make baskets, but they need to like cut reeds or straw or something. For Compare that to this file, which recorded two start times, which is suspicious. Uh, so that might be a signal. I, I, that might be that might be a signal right there. Or we've got a forty-eight maple tree. I mean, these these things all can happen in advanced societies. Goose pond with feather. These are all very natural objects. Uh, what's well, a zero? 404 is a wild carrot. So somebody trying to eat a carrot. Milkweed debris is the result of picking a milkweed. Uh, that's a that's a relatively advanced object, or a well, the tech tree advances. Uh, and that's already a use zero on something. Oh, I wonder if a single limestone is represented as a pile. Uh, I think. Is 30 gooseberry bush or is it 32? Yeah, wild gooseberry bush, wild carrot, wild gooseberry bush. Hacking wolf, if somebody landed in a wild bad area. Carrot seed head. Yeah, so this is this is looking like reasonable things that would happen after a reset. There, there's no like obviously advanced objects that are going up right here. So I think for bootstrapping, we can call this um, six seven one. <clears throat> Uh, so this is going to be like a completely manual input file. I guess I will eventually want to be putting it in that area because it's all going to be like kind of scoped to there. Uh, so that will be output. Well, I have the output directory. I have... Place test I had. Uh, we're done with you. Ah, I had my static objects that we were using. Now that's because we got. Well, that's going to get updated. That's going to get synced on occasion. That is a dependency of some of the processing. I kind of like having all the stuff together with the stuff it's used with. Uh, 
Now, I guess this, be, well, this being a manual file, I sometimes change my target directories. Or completely reset everything. Uh, this is probably the simplest thing we could do would just be a text file. <clears throat> I don't think we need any other metadata. Date modified. Hit shift. Copy as path. And I might want to do some programs that like list recent gaps and output that. A seed break. Uh, oh, you get, get a log list. I'm not sure at the right abstraction level for this right now. Uh, the simplest thing to do is just have an array. Uh, then we can ask. Let's see. So we're saying if it has placements, it's. So this is just the process of determining these. It doesn't account. For. Uh, oh, right. We come down here. If log file is seed only. And I think the other loop just ignores those. Right, because these come in after the other, these get sorted after the other files, I guess. I guess I could do my own sort of the files instead of returning them just in file system order. Didn't consider that. Okay. Uh, we have manual resets. So if it doesn't merge, you break. Uh, and that is mutually, placements is mutually exclusive with seed only. So we don't have to worry about like kind of doubling up. This is not mutually. Well, this is specifically if it's a placement. But we're gonna hit the placement file first. If we call that a break, then we're gonna write out the arc twice.
Hmm. If we get a placement file that matches that timestamp, that's a reset. We will not have processed the actual seed that comes along there. We want to say if there's a reset or if it's annual break. Haven't seen the log file yet. The 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 let's see. We can update that. Yeah, end is the start of that one. If we have, it's a match on manual break. A reset. But if we then come along and get a C file, would create a zero length arc? Kind of a negative one length arc maybe? Well, it's going to match one of our manual breaks. So that if we have a placement log, here, we would break the arc. If we then got a seed that was in there, we want to capture the seed information, but we don't need to do a full reset. If Let's see, so it is, it would be like annual resets dot member log file dot timestamp. It must be Elm that makes me keep doing fine. Uh, manual resets. But this is actually not memory. That causes a merge break. So if you come along, got a seed file, we've already broken. We've recorded a timestamp. We have generated a new arc with the possibly empty seed of that thing.
Then we need to current arc dot seed equals log file dot seed. Is that even an updatable field? It's not. All right, so we put, we make the new one, we put it onto the list. But I would have to be able to replace it in the list if I updated that. All right, so we should not see, let's see, where is, uh, yeah, so 503 to 504, and like 672, and you have an unknown end, that will end up being a known end, an unknown seed. All right, so this doesn't break anything, yay. Uh, I think I'm still printing stuff from that process. This will end up affecting that, but... So, to get this bootstrapped... We have... File system dot seed. Placement path. Now, are you a file handle or are you a doof? L system read, okay, so you are a custom, mm hmm if I read that back, so it's a, uh, no, file system dot o, then And you've got open, which turns a file handle. Have I never executed load? You always had to be file system right. Oh. No? I mean, we're writing the seed list, so. I just don't know why that works. Is it possible that I'm getting global read and write methods? Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, because I have to process in this in lines. That's a file handle, which we're doing occasionally. Gets on. Will hopefully be small. Annual resets, uh, line dot. And I guess I'm going to want to put some of the historical ones in to check um, collisions on that. Okay, we got a root. You have an unknown end and seed. Uh, so historical ones. Well, th there's the first one, which didn't really matter that much. And well, yeah, these are the outputs. And you. Oh, I'll probably have some digits in common. Uh, one, five, seven, four, one, oh, two, five, oh, three. Uh, no, five, oh, three, yeah. Five, oh, four was our advanced one of it. What down here? One five seven four. And five oh three. So this is actually somewhat reasonable. We get the break in placements, and then we get that. This is going to record 504, right? And it only appears once in here. I mean, this could be cleaned up, but it doesn't seem to be hurting anything. This doesn't handle the interfile arc. There's no file there. All right, so we have a means to do that. Uh, this could use a helper script. To say, okay, here's some recent things with gaps. Uh, do you want to add any of them to the list? Uh, or I guess recent non 24 hour files. Uh, I'll... Yeah, we don't know the length. We might know it's a short file, but we don't know its length until the next file comes. Uh, I guess it would have to give you the most recent file as an option then. Hmm. 
Oh, wait, wait, we got all that stuff turned on in brakes. Speed brake. So that should get less spammy. Now we still got this stuff on. I mean, actually, this could probably get. Wait. Oh, yeah, because this, this only does breaks at very infrequent opportunities. Yeah, so it, it's slightly annoying that we get verge break and seed change. It's it handled internally. And we might also want to abstract that file reading at some point. All right, so one thing we're currently missing. Did I? Already remove that. Yeah, I already removed that. Uh... Oh. That reminds me, I just had a double start. Um, now there were, there may have been some code changes. Do you have a single start time? First, this was a manual reset, not a player reset. You have a single start time. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see on this. Um, I think that this will put stuff out twice. I need to check processing this file and see what you do. Uh, that is file, that is file processing. But it's not you. Uh, this is a seven six zero oh, three eight six seven one. Uh, double start times. Uh, open. We're only writing index right now. Um, I guess it would write it twice if it was, in fact, doing that. Yes, it wrote it twice. Oh, no, actually, it wrote... Oh, it was big enough to break. So those are different timestamps.
Oh. Right, because this is end time, so that would have advanced to zero. Had no base. That's... For a real file, that's actually a... As far as it's so few tiles. Maybe I can maintain the complete index. Yeah, so that first one is kind of... Eh. Uh, that would have had previous times if it was a base. So, what can what do we say if start? The start was the start record. Uh. So if we saw one that was not the first record in the file, uh, well, I, I can have a method for this, right? I guess it should be S length, because uh, I could maybe do other units. All right, now, well, we'll, we'll see the double right here. Okay, wrote once, cool. Uh, so there's still use for a condition here. Uh, I had a note about this, didn't I? Or maybe I just said just fix it. All right. Uh, so how do I get? Manual breaks only occur at file boundary. I think there's only one instance have a map reset with the so I could perhaps extend that. The break is we just 
to the ordered list. Or do you also have to put out a put back that little bit of code? Say, okay, here's the timestamp. Because spans with the same seed are pretty ordinary. Well, technically, that's just a seed log right now, not an arc log. If we do have a thing to combine seeds and spans into a arc file for use as just arcs, Then I could say, well, we're loading our, our processed file. <clears throat> it's going to have spans in it now. And I guess we can track down... Uh, I don't know exactly where, which one that was. Uh, no, I probably have that in my list of files here. Two arcs in one file. So if we do th this much processing, All right, I don't know how big that is. Uh, I would like to take a short break. I'll be back in a bit. Oh, hello. Cotton flower patch, whatever that means. Somebody's angry up there. Oh, that wasn't shallow water. <laughs> they really need to work on the signaling. There should be like different colors or something. Well, we just got nothing. No, I didn't know it was that low. No. Oh. I could have sworn I should have had a few more seconds. That, that I want a ref to review video. <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. this is this is too much, mom. <laughs> I can't eat all this. Uh. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> if you can see this, you can see this I probably don't even need to do that, but I, I just like it. Um, one advantage to it in, is... All right, welcome back. All right, so this is done. We did get two indexes. Uh, where is... Any windows? That's the raw files. So 
So this uh, this is just uh. You should have been a file with two spans. Nine two nine. Oh well, this is the first time we've tested this, and it doesn't seem to have tested well. But the other thing had multiple spans too. Oh yeah, you're not you're not the right structure. Spans equals. You were supposed to be an array. But I copied the span equals. Okay, well, yeah, so the other... I can probably go through a couple of other things I've had in there, but this is like all suspect now. And I could go back through some of my other test cases. Have some other stuff in there. Uh, abort, reload. Yay, it's actually multiple spans. Uh, that one is multiple files. We expect them to each have one. Okay, so that's that's something else in there. Uh, what you want to do with this is have some process to stick this information together with this information uh, to reconstruct arcs. And I still have to figure out what to do with spans because I'm still using that my base calculate. If I've got base file, I can look at that file and look at its span. We can get spans by loading this up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I might still want an output artifact for map consumption. Uh, okay, that's a problem. Wait. In practice, this is what we want. I don't know why it did it. Probably because this had base time, so it wrote out everything with base time. Hmm. But there are other cases. Two arcs in one file, or one arc with multiple start times. Or that is not going to be true.
So these situations may need some seed management or some base time management. And that might still be able to use that same line. Because really what we need to manage is the base time. Seed log would be just fine then. And it'd technically be different arcs, but we can sort that out. Oh, I had a bunch of chunks in it. Oh, I may have also done breakpoints on. Probably a big pile. And breakpoints don't account for start times. Uh, we do scan the file enough to count lines. So you could conceivably do that and then look at the line count in each chunk. Yeah, some of these old ones were big. Uh, oh. Huh? Okay, so the start time ones are causing resets. The breakpoint ones are not. This is a little bit of a faster test. Uh, we actually do, except it's not going to be a difference there. Back zeros. Uh, that is fan S base. Oh, so that 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 thing does sort of matter. Uh, it was like span dot next. Yeah, if it's a breakpoint, we do span next. So we need to bring back. That was an arc. Maybe it shouldn't be, but that was a a place to put a. Arbitrary number. Uh, log dot s time is log dot s start. Oh, because if it's a map log s start. Uh, and that is arc, the arcs before. Uh, Tile does not manage arcs. We were testing. Log s start 
less than split arcs before, we call it a new arc, which is no base. That takes care of span continuity. It, we don't yet have an arc file, but looking at span zeros will tell us something about breakpoints. All right, so for this file, we want to continue to see zero, zero. Because this was the two arcs, one file. So it ended up being our first one in here at zero, zero. That process, and then one arc with multiple start time. All right, that will hopefully take care of that. We might still want to have an arcs document for UI use. Although we're also going to need a spans for picking chunks we can display. And maybe you could then infer the arcs from the spans. All right, so we think that's going to take care of this, uh, but we want to I don't really have any reason why these spans were created. Maybe in the processing thing, I should add a place to record that. Although right now we've got span objects, so it's not like you just took a field in there. I think in this case, they were all near the start of the log. Then again, there's not many of these, so maybe we just kind of let those be separate chunks. And we could simplify it to a string test. It's more than we're doing right now. Yeah, that's that's total amount. So you'd want to it would complicate that a little bit. Also, you'd have to get that exactly right to break at the right spot. But no, you just wouldn't even generate breakpoints there. You'd want to do that for each, each little thing, you'd generate breakpoints within that. So it starts to get complicated. All right, so our big one, zero, continuous, 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 continuous. All right. Uh, so we've taken care of this. Uh, we've taken care of breaking. 
taking care of span breaks. Uh, but what about separate arcs? Remember this. Okay, and major bug fix. Uh, uh, span resets. Uh, for multiple arcs. So we've got seeds, and we've got. Bands. In these files. Arcs would be seeds plus any of these situations. Uh, problem here is that these aren't necessarily like you're your own route and four four five seven nine two nine thirty times are slightly different. So I might have to, I might let one case slide. It will show up as a map reset. It just won't show up as an arc. So right now we're still producing a span log. As a, as its own thing. And we are using that span log to determine our base time. Now, the way in which we're doing this is like fuzzy stuff, searching and sorting in the entire span list to try and find the thing before us. But we've got a base file. So we could just look that up in the process log and look at its spans and get the last timestamp there. And then we would not have the span log directly here. We could either produce it from the processed or we could continue outputting it, but there, there's some redundancy in the format there. Of course, this only works if you process that file, which should generally be processing them in order, uh, which we're not you know, doing right now. Uh, so let's see, we had a seed change there. And did I already put on that timestamp? 
Uh, oh, and in fact, I even did greater than or equal to. So this is writing out indexes and stuff. Oh, no, wait, that's 673 was all of them. We want, which will take a little while. Uh, six, seven, six, zero, three, eight, seven, one. And then final, uh, base tile set based on a time. Base time. So if we've got a base file, then processed. Using this raw. So processed log file spans. Process base file dot fans. Uh, this is an array. There's not really filtering because they're associated with this. I mean, it's really. If you had any spans, that's still that's still a, still a thing. I guess we do have to redo these right now. Uh, keep your test. Okay, you were picking up your base times from there. Four seven one is We may not have had any span data to work with. See, I should have looked at what the, the file was processed with. Okay, so you, this one is saying, reading your index resuming, reading your index resuming. Right, we could not be recording our base times. Right. But it needs that time stamp to do the actual resumption. All right, so seven one base zero base 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 base. Okay, so you were processed with base time of. Oh, so this is, this is the actual calculated base time. 
Uh, hmm. Can I record the base file I passed in here? I mean, this shows up here. I mean, this will still change if the if the if this data changes. So I guess that's good. And this is the end. So see your unknown. Uh, and I, yeah, I might be dropping it from this file effectively. That's why you would merge it to get feeds with spans, I guess. So now this doesn't, this can produce the span file. But I don't think it needs to. Yeah, so this might become a thing we put a note for later. Uh, so we have the arts in one file. And the reason we might not just dump that code is that we might want to grab pieces of it. Make a new span file. Yeah, that involves way less fidgety man. As far as picking our times based on the spans. Oh, you know what else drops out? Uh, does base arc ever matter? It does now. window. I think arc at is still in you. Ooh, arc at is not in use. Oh, nope, there we go. Just typo. So I want to read those. I want to put them together so everything has a seat. I guess since the process log JSON thing. A proper object could just entirely from. Then, if you read the process log and the log, then pick all the spans together. 
find the remaining arc to get the seeds. And just have the span log from which you could reassemble arcs. By looking for contiguous seeds. Mm. In the arcs, no, I haven't looked at the seed log to see if there's ever if, I, if there there were any weird cases in there. There may have been some cases where we said, "Up, oh, nope, we don't merge with you," even though we had the same seed. I think all of those cases ended up having null seeds, so it ended up being different. For all the all of the weird special cases. No. And we've got our double seeds and our unknown future. So having split that out into spans, you probably could reconstruct the arcs from the spans with contiguous seeds. All right, unfortunately, I do want to do Step Mania and, you know, have lunch and stuff at some point. So that's going to be it for today. I might, if I remember to do it, I might be able to kick off a full processing run just to see if any glitches show up. Because uh, this is something that can be done after the fact. Uh, this is for the S3 run. This is for future resets. I might want this at some point. I think I've taken care of that. We've got two-part seeds on the processing end. We still have to do it on the front end. Uh, once we determine our file format here. We might have enough processing to actually do a run. Anyway. Uh, if you're for, for programming, I'm done programming. Uh, if you just want to hang out, I'm going to come back and do some step mania in a little bit. I am going to do a stream break just because I changed my resolution and frame rate settings, and then it's just a very, very different thing. Uh, also, those can occasionally get muted, and I don't want that affecting these. It's convenient for me. This is about when I'm usually on, so right around now, I'll switch over just to Step Mania. And program in the morning, gaming in the afternoons. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs>